Welcome, everyone. We are back. It is another episode of The Flow Show, number 202, brought to you by Karate Combat. We got the man, the mid, Jeff Platt. Join us. Jeff, how are you? I'm doing well, Jeff. Thank you so much for having me. Great to catch up. Great to chat with you, as always. Hey, listen, it's it's a, it's a pleasure. It's been a while since we've gotten to connect. I know there was, a, well, I'm trying to think it was Bahamas. I think we talked a little bit, and, and I know you're, you're kind of everywhere right now. And, and for those that don't know you, give us a little background. You, you, you were in poker for a long time now, but you feel, I feel like you're literally everywhere. Poker go, no gamble, no future. You're in LA right now doing WSOP commentary. What is your day-to-day currently in poker? I guess day to day, Jeff, the easiest way to describe it would just be poker broadcaster, whether that be play by play commentary on a show like No Gamble, No Future on some of those World Series of Poker bracelet events, Poker Go Tour events, or a sideline reporter fortunate enough to be involved with the World Series of Poker main event. Really, Jeff, if you just give me a microphone, you say there's a poker tournament going on. I'll just do whatever. I just, I just talk about poker. I'm living the dream. Extremely lucky, extremely fortunate. Um, that's where, that's where I'm at right now. I started in, in 2018 with poker news. And I think Jeff, that you were, if not the first, one of the first interviews that I did. So you've oh, wow. always been very welcoming, very, very uh, open to me. It's something that, that I'll always remember for sure. Was that in the Bahamas by any chance? I remember talking in the Bahamas and like a, a PCA I, I, or some did, event. I, I think w- we did do that, yes, but I, I want to say 2018 World Series. Before okay. that, we also uh, yep. chatted there at some preliminary bracelet that, event. That's that's well. that's it, 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 the years blend together. Vegas, that's one thing. I yeah. what I love the most about vlogging and content and doing comment these type of things like with clips and have it's like nice to have a record and sort of be able to look back on what's going on because I mean I, I've been going to Vegas since I was basically 21 and you know, the summers blend together and the time kind of, it's like a lot of the same, sure. same tournament type events or, you know, it's it just, it's nice to have that sort of recording. And also I want to talk about Twitch. You have, you stream, you've done that. How, how much are you, how much are you doing on that currently? And how much do you enjoy actually streaming on uh, Twitch or one of these, you know, online platforms? Well, it's a, it's a good question. It's something that I started during the pandemic in 2020 during the World Series. I had just busted the very first online event. I'm sitting on my couch, obviously had nothing to do. And this thought just kind of crossed my mind. You know, Phil Hellmuth was running deep in an online World Series of Poker bracelet event. The yep. people obviously in the poker community are very interested in that. But, but Jeff, you could not watch it unless you were inside Nevada or New Jersey. So if you're outside, like you just you just can't watch Phil Helmuth. And so I thought, what if I just put on a show, so to speak, yep. and just put Helmuth's table up? And we started there. And so I just put his table up, people came and watched. I, it allowed me to work on some commentary. And then it just turned into an everyday thing for the World Series in 2020. I would play on Twitch and then I would do commentary for the feature tables and I was pulling different big names up and it, it's Negranu or Helmuth Negranu would call in and we just had fun with it. And uh, of course, 2020 was a terrible time for so many people. For, yeah. for me personally, it just happened to work out really well because I tried to pounce on this this opportunity to get people outside Nevada, outside New Jersey, a look at what was going on for this online yeah. World Series of Poker. And then I, I continued with it for the next year or so i kind of make these random appearances you know i I want to stream more hopefully it um i can get more involved with gg and stream more when i reach international waters hopefully gg can make their way to the states you know the deal etc etc but um i really enjoy twitch and i really enjoy this online community whether it's via twitch or any of the shows we do on youtube those are some of my favorite shows where you just get to interact with the people and I, i think that that helps the broadcast so much that, that's awesome, and when and I actually remember those specifically. And would would I, were you surprised at how much how many people tuned in for that? Because I I do remember seeing like pretty big numbers, and and also the schedule, right? Because it was like PST sort of late, and those those tournaments can go very late because they're bracelet events, or they and they runs right. like super late, like till four or five a.m. or later, even Eastern, and go you know for the PST, it's it's conducive, and there's not really many people streaming right poker at that time. I would like yeah. for for there's not like this the main schedule is not running deep so the competition in, in terms of other streamers and playing games i don't think is so much maybe someone streaming like the, one of the events right but but rare that you know it's not like some of the bigger streamers are generally uh doing that i think so would you were you were you were you surprised how much 
engagement it got or did it just yeah, sort of go? I, I, I was I was pretty surprised I would say uh, you make yeah. a good point it probably helped me that it was at such weird hours yeah because I mean, I those that is really about, popular about, streamers in Europe yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they aren't there and and of course you know nobody has anything really going on in the summer of 2020 right so they're yeah. everybody's just sitting at home and they want to tune into some world series of poker coverage and i was just happy to be there to allow it but yeah i would say there were a few moments where i thought this is kind of crazy like I, I was just hoping that 200 people would watch and yeah there are 3500 people watching right now I, I thought that that was really uh really cool to me and it, it speaks to and you know this of course just how passionate the poker community is yeah i think the you know the the fact that you're it's also just being creative right that's like a great idea that that's like something that you literally like that's happening that that no one really thought of and you just sort of uh, made it your own and that's that is very very cool and, and i think you know that's the thing there's so much now content in poker there's so many people doing podcasts there's so many people doing uh streaming or twitch they have tiktok x you know shorts all these different things and a lot of people are doing them and i think that the poker is really benefiting from that and i, I think it, have you noticed a, a bit of a respect shift that has happened with like twitch or people doing content streamers because I, I feel you know i was sort of like i would call myself a hybrid where i started doing twitch in 2015 yeah. i i played poker a long time you know i'm not a gto you know top 0.1 percent or, or, or player but like i was playing i feel like i had some results i had some respect i was playing and, and that helped but then there was I, just one thing stands out for me was kevin martin because i knew jamie staples kevin martin J jason somerville obviously some of the originals that were sort of big on twitch and um i remember that when kevin signed with poker stars it was maybe like 16 or 17 i can't remember if he was i think he might have been might have been for it was around that time and he said people were outraged like it was literally like people were losing their shit they were like who is this guy he plays five dollar micros and like what the hell is going on and then i think there, this was like the brands kind of recognized i think they really shifted like stars i remember used to sponsor like 50 60 play jason mercier and all these players that were like world-class players they've won big titles and that was like what was exciting and big and then all of a sudden the twitch kind of shifted and they started like scaling back realizing okay someone who wins some tournaments and isn't really doing any content and it sort of shifted but have you noticed that where the the top players because you're in the poker Girl studios you're doing these these cups you're doing all this stuff with all the best players are in the world you know the world are playing these 10ks 25ks the the jackets going for the titles and like the do you feel that they feel more sort of like open and respectful and like kind of less critical of some of the, the stream or the people because they realize it's bringing people in the game and it actually is important have you felt like that at all because I, I feel like they they didn't really get much respect a lot of the content creators if that makes sense yeah i, I do think they're they're seen differently nowadays it's a really interesting point that you make because to your point, the, the game changed as far as content creation is concerned, especially yeah. over these last 10 years. I mean, I remember, you know, of course, you and, and Kevin Martin and Jamie Staples, and, and you had this, this group, a small core group of very successful streamers, and that has morphed that they've kind of opened the door for everybody. And I think they opened the door for the other content creators that you see now you know the wolfgang pokers of the world yeah. the rampage poker brad owen andrew nimi all of the vloggers that have kind of stepped into that content creation zone and i i do think that a lot of them get a lot of respect within the poker community probably because and correct me if you think i'm, I'm wrong that they've, they've drawn so many people into the game like they're that initial welcome, whether you're streaming or vlogging or you're on TikTok, you are bringing people into poker. It's probably rare. I'm just guessing. It's rare that Stephen Chidwick, you know, is watching poker vlogs and like right. is interested in what Rampage or Brad Owen is doing. But somebody <laughs> I, who just yeah. kind of has seen poker casually on TV, yeah. they've clicked a few buttons here and there. Like, like that's that's what they want. So I, I think that those content creators have really earned the respect that that they're being given now and then jeff of course we still have a door that's ready to be kicked down if we can expand online poker in the united states imagine what that will open up because sure there are there are some american streamers in uh new jersey and nevada and michigan and pennsylvania but i feel like there's a lot more to come in the online realm over the next 10 years or so here in the states 
Yeah, it, it, you know, I, I'm just looking back at Black Friday 2011 and, and how crazy that was on April 15th. And, you know, just the, looking now that the fact that the U.S. is still it's, you know, I would have lost a lot because I just was thinking in my head um, how it works and you see sports, all this stuff. It's just like the fact that poker's still where we are today. You know, I still am optimistic. Yeah. I'm thinking, OK, it's going to start happening and start dominoing and piggybacking on some of these, you know, the, the sports is betting legal at a federal level. And you see it's on ESPN, the lines, and it's just getting a lot more nonchalant. But then also the daily fantasy, right? It's like, how can that be legal and like work and not poker? And, and but then and why is and then these states and also right now, I think they're getting more desperate, more, more open to like revenues and and how this works. And people are still playing on offshore regulated sites and doing these things. So I am optimistic. I think there is still a massive boost, like a boom coming with you know, California. I know that's the key state, right? That they would say that's like the third largest country in the world for traffic. If California yeah. were to open up like a loan, it would be like. You know, what I mean, you could you could get back to some like huge guarantees and liquidity and like Texas, Florida, these type of things. So I'm optimistic. It's just kind of crazy that, you know, we're still here where it's sort of like I, I actually I think you and I are super similar, not just because we're named Jeff and born within three months of each other and sort of do broadcast, do a lot of very similar <laughs> things. I think that, um, you know, we're we are in a, a, a time where it's like there's a there's just like for us, it's very complicated. And you did, you already alluded to about GG, WSOP, you know, talks about them or is it going to merge or how's it going to work? But it's just, it's hard being a US person that is like a call it a content creator in the in, in doing stuff because like I always feel sort of unsure. Like I'm, I'm like kind of like, feel like it's like not right. It's weird, you know? And then like I, I've been working in an ambassador for GG doing, the GG million with them and stuff. But like I'm not able to, I actually don't even know still to the day, like am I allowed to like, sweat gg can i log in vpn even i'm in miami and just watch like the the, just the, watch. the can yeah. i watch it and like show it even though but i'm in i'm like how can you know can i say i'm in miami and watch the table but like i'm not playing but i'm logged in these type of things that like like to your idea i i've thought about that too like i do the gg million weekly right i if i watched actually down the stretch if you pull up a couple of tables maybe did on sunday a couple hours like leading to the final table and kind of watched it talked it prepped it you know, it's talked about all the final tables gonna be Tuesday and just like chat because I don't have that luxury on Twitch, right? I can't log in today and play a GG tournament or a, a, a scoop. I can't do it, stream it, and I just can't do it in my house. So like that sucks, right? Like I, I I've thought about maybe I'd stream two three hours a day, but what am I gonna play? Like a a cash game or a, a club play money site? I mean, you know what I mean? So like I've thought about it. it's just kind of you know what I mean the identity for us. It's kind of like I feel like I'm in and out i don't know what i can do what i can't it's like weird right and then and then for the brands as well the us is so big but what happens when it does open up or DraftKings might get into poker i know fan duels like i think with poker star like there is going to be like some surge for uh poker and i think that you know we're in a probably pretty good spot right to do you do what you love you do journalism broadcasting and poker and i think there is some really big opportunities coming but it's just like at some point it's just kind of like it what what is is it where, where is it at you know what i mean like what how, is it two years is it one year is it like close i i still feel like it's crazy right this is like what 13 years 12 years since and it's not happened so i you you probably have a better idea than me what is your gut feeling on that where where the industry is and what might open up it does feel like over the last you know five years let's say we've been on this steady rise of sorts but just a very slow growth over the course of the last few years yeah. and i i do think like you said that there is a boom still left and it all comes down to just how big the american poker market can be i do think that nevada and new jersey will merge their player pool with michigan for the summer that's a big step. I mean, to, to bring in, you know, 11 million eligible players or whatever it is from Michigan to join New Jersey and Nevada, that's going to provide, you know, I don't know what the exact number is, but it's a 40, 50 percent boost to numbers across the board. That's a that's a really important step. Maybe Pennsylvania can be next. Same thing. And so just, if, just, just sorry to interrupt you to grow like this. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. I want I, I want to I want you to carry on stuff just to just so I don't forget. So you're telling me I didn't know this. So because I'm from Michigan, my family lives there. I have a setup. Right, right. I, I know you're like, Michigan I, guy. Yeah, I could go so you're saying potentially this summer i could like literally if i'm home at some stretch or or if bracelet when the bracelet online series is happening you're saying you could be in michigan you could play for a bracelet uh, on and and be in that liquidity pool that would actually that's like potentially happening soon that's like what that they're saying i believe that i believe and i hope uh i don't get in trouble for saying this <laughs> i don't think i will no. uh is is ve very 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 close to happening so i would be surprised jeff if you couldn't this summer go to michigan 
play on a stream for World Series of Poker Bracelet with the player pool from Nevada and New Jersey. Now, Pennsylvania will still have online bracelets, I believe, but they'll be in that restricted player pool just within their state. But Michigan is expected to join Nevada and New Jersey online, which does mean that the World Series of Poker will bring its online bracelet events to that three-state player pool now. And, and Michigan, so Pennsylvania, I remember there were some events where it was almost like there's they only got like it was like 2K and they had like 40 players or 50 for a bracelet and a couple yeah. events. It, did, did Michigan, Michigan hasn't had an individual state for bracelets, but they, they, they Michigan just, has. Michi Michigan kind of did the same thing as Pennsylvania oh, did over the okay. last couple of years or however long it's been. So yeah, Michigan has been eligible for World Series of Poker online circuit rings and, and online bracelets as well. So they have oh, had There has been a set. You could literally just play with the Michigan pool to win a World Series of Poker bracelet. Yeah. I, I didn't, I saw Pennsylvania. Yeah. I did not realize that. Interesting. So in a way, it almost would be, it's good. It'd be more fun or it'd be bigger prizes and, and more exciting to do that. But in a, to win a bracelet, a little better shot if it's just in Michigan, for example. That, that so, But either way, you can win a bracelet in Michigan. That's either way, that's definitely true. I, I didn't know that. Yes, okay. yes, 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 good. yes. And you got to go for that, right? I mean, that's you got to fire experience from Michigan. But is that, is that when it, there, there's always during the WSOP, there's the bracelets yeah. that mix in throughout, but then there's usually like in August, if I, it's usually that's where there's a, there's like a series of just online. Cause they do like the global bracelets for WSOP. Right. And then there's the, uh, the, 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 the like us ones for online too. Is that, that's a separate series though, usually like after isn't that, yes, isn't that yes that's right. It, it usually is, like you said, GG will run something around yeah. August or September. And then yes, the US will run something around September or October with, with some more bracelets up for grabs. Very cool. And how, I know your, 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 uh, your guy, Jeff, uh, you and Brent are you just kind of synonymous. Everyone knows, and Brent won a bracelet and he's there and he's your partner, yeah. no, no gamble, no future. And he has a bracelet. How, how much, how important is a bracelet to you to, to, to win? Is this something you think about? Do you, you hunt it? Do you want it? Do you care? Uh -huh. It's a, it's a great question. I, I think if you're talking to any poker player who takes poker in any way, at least somewhat seriously, they always want that World Series of Poker bracelet, right? I, I mean, you know, that's, that's just always on the top of your mind. I think yeah. personally, it's the most yeah. prestigious title that the game has to offer. And so every opportunity I get at the World Series to, to bracelet hunt, I'm, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be in the mix. Obviously work, you know, prevents me specifically from just firing throughout the course of the entire summer. But uh, yeah, I got to get one, especially Jeff, just to, to shut Brent up for a little right. bit, you know, I mean, the guy can yeah. just always point to his, to his bracelet that he won 56 years ago or whatever it is. He's just got one long, over it's, me. It's true. At some point you gotta, it, it's gotta be, yeah, he, he, we need, we need one. And, and another thing we have in common, we both don't have a bracelet. I also, it is yeah, sort of that I don't one. like, it doesn't like, you know, I'm not like pained by it, but it is like, at some point I'm like, Hey, I've been playing 20 years or, you know, let's say what 20. Yeah. 30, 15 years eligible, 16 years eligible for bracelet, some close calls. And it would be nice, right? It is kind of like at some point, and there's yeah. a lot now because there's online, there's a state ones, there's the, the, the whatever. It's it's kind of like, uh, you know, there's that list always, the most well-known player that hasn't won. I think Jason Kuhn even was like not long ago was on there. Obviously, he's won every every tournament in, in, the, in the book. But yeah, it is kind of, it would be nice to tick that off, like the, off the box. My son's five. Like, I don't want to be like, you know, 10 years, you know, get to a point where his friends and stuff are like, you know, talking like, oh, you're, you know, you didn't even win a bracelet. These guys are professional. Everyone's got a bracelet. These guys have 17, 16 bracelets. But yeah, no, I, I think you're right. It is sort of a, that's one of those things you just, you want to have on the mantle. And especially when your co-host and partner is uh, definitely, you know, does he wear it? Does he ever bring it around? Does he, I mean, he does bring it up. He, no, he supposedly, I mean, he brings it up all the time, but suppose right. I think he gave it to his dad, which is so sweet. Like it's an amazing gesture yeah. and his yeah. dad just lost the bracelet. So the, nobody has any idea in the Hanks family of, of where it is. So it's gone. It must be tough for you because you got to deal with Helmuth a lot. And it, I mean, you're around Helmuth all the time and the guy's got 17 of them. What do you say to that? I love it. You know, we, we do do a lot of stuff together. I love saying when we're combined, I always say, you know, we when I'm like combined 17 World <laughs> Series of Poker bracelets. It's a strong, Sorry. Uh, Sorry. yeah. No, no one usually asks what, who's, what's the breakdown, but yeah, oh, no, it's, uh, it's, it is, it is, it, it, it'd be fun to get. We'll, uh, I'm going to put a bound, I'm going to put a bonus out there. We'll put the, if, uh, you and I win a bracelet in 2024, uh, I'm going to do a, uh, 
I'm gonna do a twenty-five thousand dollar giveaway. I'm gonna give away twenty-five k if we both win a bracelet in the year twenty twenty-four. So like, let's okay, that's let's a, do it for fun, right? Like that'd be I would be pumped, dude. If yeah. you honestly, I would be so happy. We could do a show together. We can just like give away. We'll we'll spend a couple hours and just be be giving shit away because that I I feel it, man. I think one of us is gonna get it this year. Well, I don't know about two. That's hard, right? Yeah. We never got one. We're gonna get two. two it's stuff. it's it's, un, it's a real. There's a little EV in that. I think it's not impossible, right? I'm gonna go Michigan hunting and you'll play a bit and we'll we'll do it. All right, um, that's a book. That's a official for the oh. for the we'll put that out there um what is uh what what do you like more what is more enjoyable would you say doing to to play in a bracelet event or to let's say you know commentate something that's that's very you know high like high stakes poker or poker go you're doing something that's like really really high level the best in the, and it's high production you're like i mean does it does it close or what what do you prefer if you had a choice on a day uh it's it's a great question i i would always lean towards the work just because I, I genuinely am super wow. passionate about it especially when i have the opportunity like you said to, to work some of these premium events like I, I get to be a sideline reporter for the world series of poker main event i mean that's that's pretty cool if you were to tell me that 20 years ago when i was watching money maker on espn along with the rest of us uh i also would have thought that that'd be pretty cool and uh, yep. just I just I'm just very lucky and very fortunate to be involved. So I'm always going to point to being involved from a work standpoint. Now, with that said, playing is right up there. I mean, they are they are effectively neck and neck. It's just yeah. working will always win out for me just by a nose because of how passionate I am about it. But this this is an amazing game. I've completely fallen in love with it over the last yet even decade or so and so whether it's work or play i just keep going back to just being happy to be there happy to be involved happy to have opportunities whether it's to play or to do play-by-play -play commentary or to do sideline reporting I'm, I'm i'm just here for everything wherever they tell me to go jeff i'll go that's yeah that's awesome I, i'm a little, i'm not i shouldn't say surprised but for me too i i love uh i love doing all the broadcasts and stuff but it is something about getting deeper playing and having that 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 opportunity but it, it is nice to it it is awesome when it is when it's all right and because you, know, you know how many how much goes into it. I want to ask you about Maury and I think Dan as well who got you got originally in the poker pro productions and and these guys who are just doing incredible stuff behind the scenes and uh, I, I it, it so much goes into it right to actually like tr the Tritons yeah. and the poker goes of the world that are doing the high level production and like the camera and the equipment in the back and the st all the things that have to be done and the gaming commissions and the you know what I mean the the tables and the all of it to work. And then get to kind of be there and just get to like do what you love and watch it happen and watch like kind of uh unfold it is it is special too you know because like it's this is cool about poker it's always different right it's like the final table why yeah. how is it so exciting how is this final table which a series or a trite how it like okay well money maker just wins a th comes back from one big blind on the river hits a card <laughs> that's your guy i know money maker he's uh he's also been on the podcast and, he, and we're, we're gonna tell he's got some merch for you i think now i look like there yeah, was a, a merch made we'll be we'll be showing that but you know th these are what's fun right because it's like whether it's the negranu or the the helmuth or the Asfandiari who's these like uh, these these titans that still can do it or win it's exciting or a new person comes in and wins or someone rises or a star gets hot it's just, it's just like and again the, st the the stack sizes are different the prizes are different the gates plo it's hold them it's no limit it's a mystery bounty. there's like all these different things which i think keeps it uh, surprisingly exciting right where you're like actually like all right this is fun or i'm curious how this is going to do or there's a new you know poker changes every year three betting flatting four you should four bet five bet min six bet just fl you know like stuff's always <laughs> changing which is wild too right the game is literally always changing and what people say is right and people are getting called a, you know a fish three years ago now that actually might be the right way to play or people are ahead of their time and looks bad it's just yeah. i don't know it's a beautiful game and i think it is like it is it is literally like it, it's a treat to be able to do to to commentate or to watch and to, to talk high level poker i think that is uh it is it is it is a uh, i got on a tangent i got excited but i do want to ask you about your journalism you you were in dallas you're born you're raised in dallas from school there then you went to usc you you got a degree there in broadcasting and then you i believe either worked originally with the mavericks or got into san antonio tell me about that uh phase of your life when you when you were doing that at usc yeah sure uh, so right after i graduated from sc with that degree in broadcast journalism that you mentioned back you know 15 years ago when i graduated the the most common plan of attack was okay well now you have to go work in a super tiny city you have to do the sports part of the local news that was really the path because it's not like 2024 where you have all these different 
outlets to create content. It was just, okay, go to, go to a TV station and they'll get you on camera. And that's basically your, your only yep. path. So I went to uh, good old Jackson, Mississippi and worked as a sports anchor reporter for their CBS affiliate. And then after that, like you said, I spent some time um, in Dallas at the ESPN radio affiliate covering the Mavericks and in San Antonio for a TV station there covering the Spurs. So I was just doing whatever I could to, to be on air to be broadcasting, to be around these NBA teams, to get in a question here and there to a Dirk Nowitzki or, or Greg Popovich. I just kind of wanted to be be there and, and just to be in the mix and and tell tell the stories that that these that these sports had to offer. Yeah, and and I saw that note about Jackson, Mississippi. That, that's kind of a, I, I don't know anything yeah. about that. And and w- was that just like a completely random assignment? And how was it there? I, I, how was that? That seems like deep south was, and just different, you know different. It, yeah, it, it's one of those things where you just send out your resume tape that you create after college to a lot of small towns. And I, like I remember being really pumped up because the news director in baton rouge louisiana sent me an email back and he's like hey you were in our top five so keep it up i'm like oh baton rouge almost hired me you know i've really got i've really got something going here so you're applying to just these and and not that jackson is a super small town but you are applying to pretty small cities across the country just because you want you want to get your foot in the door you want to get on camera and jackson mississippi was a, a great experience for me it allowed me to you know, really work on this broadcasting craft. It's a great spot, Jeff, as you might imagine, to kind of get your mistakes out of the way. So if you mess up on air in Jackson, Mississippi, it's not like somebody would just be re- recording that on their phone and put it on some kind of social media outlet like Instagram or Twitter or put yeah. it on YouTube and make fun of you. Like you could just you could just mess up and find out what worked for you and what didn't work for you as far as your broadcasting style was concerned. It, it was great interview experience as well. I think I, I got better at interviewing over the course of time throughout my sports broadcasting career, which as we both know today is, is a very important asset or skill to have uh, in, in the poker world. Absolutely. And, and speaking of Dallas, Doug Polk made some headlines. He's, he's obviously, you know, yeah. I got to give big credit with, with, I know him, um, Brad Owen, Andrew Nemi, others involved there, but Lodge and, 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 and just kind of like very cool how it's grown. They had a big series there. I know it missed the guarantee, but it's massive. Texas poker's blowing up. There's the champions club. Hell me is involved and was just doing that in Houston and, and poker seems wildly expanding and in, in in texas but dallas he did they did go to to a place and and again i have a, a clip here where he was in uh, do you are you familiar how familiar are you with farmer's branch with, yeah are you, do you know this specific area and why is this like a portion i mean there's dallas is huge so is there is this like yeah, is this dallas, dallas is dallas huge. Or is this like a suburb that you know I think a suburb is a good way to put it, but but right outside Dallas, like if you were anywhere in the city, it's not like it would take you hours to get over to Farmer's Branch. I, I certainly consider Farmer's Branch a part of the, the Dallas-Fort Worth metroplex area. And were you surprised by this or when you were you kind of following this along and were you did with the voting? And I mean, I guess they can be it, it, there'll be other appeals and tries and, you know, it just takes time and stuff does happen. But what, what's your thought about that, that the result on this? Yeah, I, I was following it along. Uh, you know, I think that poker in Texas is really starting to thrive thanks to Doug, thanks to the Champions Club crew that you mentioned, uh, Roy Choi, yeah. Isaac Trumbo, Phil Helmuth uh, yeah. involved there. And I, I think the door is still open to really make a move in Dallas. But listen, it, it's it's tough when the city council, for example, is not too familiar with poker, Right. And they have some of their constituents come up to them and and effectively say, I'm exaggerating for the sake of effect, like, yeah. we don't want a casino here. Like, it, they're going to play loud music. Who knows the characters that are going to be around? They're going to be yeah. selling drugs in the alley behind it. And people just associate poker with that degenerate gambling. You and yeah. I and probably most of the people watching this right now know that that's not the case with poker it's a game of skill but imagine if somebody just zapped your brain of all your poker knowledge and you just sat there on the city council listening to people who lived in your area telling you about what harm a poker room could be because they attach it to a casino so i'm not surprised that they're 
such hurdles to to jump over. I do think though it's going to get better and better and better. Listen, if you watched Doug talking with the city council, one of those city council members said, "Hold on a second here. You know, my dad was a big fan of poker. Uh, my dad would watch poker on TV. Uh, poker players are not bad people, and I, I know Doug has you know gone into that." Um, subject as well. He said, you, you cannot associate the poker players with the degenerate scumbags of the world. That's just not the case. So eventually, Jeff, more and more people are going to be aligned with that thought process versus the thought process of others that are just objectively wrong as far as what poker is bringing to their city, to their suburb, uh, to their town. So, so I think that Doug's going to keep trying. I think that the Champions Club True is going to keep trying to expand in Texas. And I do think that we're only just getting started as far as poker in Texas is concerned. And I'm thrilled to see it grow the way it has been. And I think it's just it's just going to grow more and more in the future. That's yeah, I, I, well said. I think exactly. I think it, it, these type of things make a big difference. It does matter, and I, and it, it seems like it's going well. Poker's always does seem like what one step forward, two steps back type of stuff, like even online, yeah. which is amazing. That's so good. But then there's these like, you know, talk about bots and there's like uh, RTA, these type of things where it's like, you know, it gets like a little bit start that there is a, there is an inflection point. There is a, there is a technology sort of, you know, worrisome stuff, right? It's kind sure. of like gets sure. into these, but, but with the same token that I think the, the people are in general, don't I mean, even myself i don't understand all but there's a lot of security measures and equipment in ways that people can notice and and i think that actually you know the same thing that can actually overtake and like there's detection methods or things that make it really hard and they can clean stuff up so you know it's it's always give and take but uh, overall i'd say the health it seems like the numbers are up right if you look at the big series big guarantees online they're doing very well live is like crushing what we just had the three series last december where you, know, you had the the wsop bahamas down there for and that was insane and, and the huge guarantees and, and hit and then there was some in europe i forget going and then also wpt had their guarantee which missed but was was massive and bigger than before so you know there there, there seems to be like you, you start getting the, the feel that stuff is legit you know that stuff is like building and, and it there's numbers to to back that up so i, I do think it, i'd say the whole the health of poker is in a very good uh, very good place right now. And speaking of good health, Moneymaker, the man who kind of started it, you're, you're friendly with, and I mentioned a good buddy, has been on, been on here as well. And, you know, always, uh, always a pleasure. He, he, he you and him kind of go back and forth and he actually got this. And is this, is this, a, is this actually, was, has this been officially printed or is this a design that might be done? But you know, that we, I got to talk on, turn on, dim all the lights, dim the lights, Donna Summer and ask about her and, and, and what the dim the lights, but, but this, what is going on here? I mean, this is just these fools, Chris Moneymaker and, and Tony Burns of the Moneymaker Tour, you know, just trying to pounce and create a, a product. And Jeff, it is it's absolutely despicable. I mean, look at that. And the, the guy does barely looks like me who they have uh, in that picture. So, you know, they want to have a little fun with the curse. And I'll tell you what, Jeff, I'm happy to interview Chris Moneymaker every day of the World Series of Poker. If the curse is real, then I'm I'm going to use these powers and uh, Chris Moneymaker is going to be on the wrong end of it. It's that simple. I mean, the guy wins a poker tournament, you know, once every 21 years. So I guess he can't rely on poker for income. He's got to resort to to t-shirt yeah. sales. It, it, it was a good timing though. The Triton GG million live. I mean, yeah. the first one, you go over to Montenegro, you you uh you you, you scoop it for for 900 k and pretty pretty uh pretty powerful stuff. Very, very cool to see Chris still doing well. And I think his story too, he had one big blind on the bubble or you know, spun it up, hit a river card, Queen's Ace Jack. It rivers it and then he comes on to win. I mean, it's really chipping a chair. Just I, I actually had a clip I found. I went to a podcast I did with him, and one of the clips I had was about Moneymaker's name, which is interesting because he he's got a little German in him. Moneymaker, he's from he's got German yeah. descent, which makes sense. You know, poker pretty good, pretty good at poker. Uh, that 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 region, that country, and he then they, I think it wasn't the real name. Like they immigrated something like that, and then they chose they had a name and then changed it. And I actually brings up a, a bit of a pain point for me because. You know, my, similar. I think a lot of this happened, right? A lot of families that moved, they they would come here and they'd change and do names and whatever. And and like my family, I had like my last name was like Krasilnek or roughly something hard to spell, but they they, they then they changed it to Gross. And I'm like, man, you know, if, if what were what were the ancestors doing? Like moneymaker, what did, these guys should get get an award? Like I, you just show up, you're like, yeah, we're gonna call ourselves moneymaker. I mean, that's actually kind of wild, right? Like that's a 
that's a great change. You know what I mean? That's a that's a that's a crazy crazy pick of a name, but it worked out for them, and it's uh, it's been been pretty cool and a cool name. I, I don't I've never heard of anyone else named Moneymaker. Have you have you met, heard that name from anywhere anywhere? It's I mean, it's not. No, Smith I haven't. Or, it, it it's funny that that family's decision just changed everything in in the poker world. That one decision, whoever that one family member was, who was like. Uh, can we do moneymaker and just wrote wrote that one down and that that changed everything for all of us it's wild yeah. to think about right yeah if his name's like chris you know chris gross chris platt chris chris uh chris you know yeah, smith just whatever might, he won the world yeah, series good uh, for him amateur yeah. got lucky but this is yeah it all feels a little it's just kind of a <laughs> matrix type type moment so yeah good shout out to uh chris and, and all right dim the lights dim all the lights donna summers this the, the, did you know about this did, where where is dim the lights come from i know this is like people like i think of this every time i know you're deep i know this is like your thing what it, does yeah. is this have anything to do with it is it from this what does it mean and what is it it's a good guess this this is my thing you know going into uh playing a poker tournament or hyping up a broadcast kind of like a dim the lights here we go so i did steal it jeff but i didn't steal it from the legendary donna summers i stole it from Ryan Seacrest of American Idol because every time he's about to announce the results, he says, dim the lights, here we go. And so they dim the lights, they make it all dramatic. So I'm trying to make poker more dramatic, right? I'm trying to make it more compelling. I love it. I love this thing. For me, dim the lights just just kind of just kind of fits what we're doing. Don't tell Seacrest I stole it from him. Uh, I have not had to pay any royalties to him or the uh, American Idol crew, but I just thought that this was that this was perfect uh, for poker. So I, I, I just it. used it. Over I here. love it. I love it. I love it. It is. It's nice to have a sort of a yeah, like a sim, like a a, a coined thing. So I, I like it. It does make sense. It does feel. I, I when I started thinking, about it, I was like, yeah, it's it is actually you start. It's it's catchy. You know, what I mean, it's it does make you think, and yeah. it feels uh feels right. That's very very cool. And you're in a you play did you do the fantasy the 25k are you involved with that do you guys have a team or you're what's your taking with that your, your, your yeah partaking. brent and i have team no gamble no future so what we do every year is we sell off 50 percent to the people on poker stakes so we really consider ourselves that the team of the people team no gamble no future in that 25k fantasy brent is the general manager i'm of course president of team operations was very unhappy jeff with brent's performance last year i thought he slipped up at the draft multiple times uh mm. you know we had a war room strategy going in and the man didn't abide by it uh, i demoted him at one point to assistant general manager uh after some of our struggles but he's back i think the front office is now uh is now on the same page and we're very much looking forward to this 25k fantasy draft how, how many years have you done it or you've been involved in some way We've done it for the last couple of years. I think this will be our uh, our third year. Yeah, and has it has it has a technology? Has the the production like the the meeting? I know Daniel's like the spearhead, right? This is like one of this has been going for a long time. But is it getting more and more like? Does it feel more official and better? Like getting bigger, more people are coming yeah. in, is it growing. Because now now we do it at the Poker Go studio, which you were just at mm -hmm. last week, maybe maybe it was two weeks ago. Yeah, and so you can imagine with the bar area, the lounge area, we're out kind of on the main stage we put the the auction spreadsheet up on the big poker go studio wall the commissioner yeah. tim duckworth is up there he's announcing picks like it just feels uh very very legit official. very yeah. very official so i think that that 25k fantasy league has really grown through throughout the years so you look forward to it it's like one of the things you're like actually this is like exciting it's really it's an event it's exciting to go yeah i feel like and i feel like now it's it's a, a staple of the summer not just for me because i have a piece of a of a team but i kind of feel like for the fans as well that they like it also because it just gives them an additional storyline to track throughout the world series of poker if you're sitting at home and you're a big poker fan but you can't make it out to the world series for whatever reason you want these kinds of stories to accompany all the the hand updates that you have going on from from certain tournaments so i think it's great that we do it not just for the people involved but for the people watching the action as well and then it's great that we can post some on poker stakes so you could buy you know 0.1 percent of a a 25k fantasy team which i i think it's awesome that we were able to get the people involved i love it and that's actually want to get your opinion because I, I with staking i know you've done some stuff as well with staking and i i mean i've sold action i find it's really interesting for yeah. viewers and it's engagement what it, there's there's basically two sites 
there's there's stake kings and poker stake and i think you've i don't know you've done action on, on sp spots as well and i've i've been with stake kings for like i don't know eight years so I've, I've used that but i know poker stake also you see it everywhere daniel i think crashed the site again even though they knew it was yeah. uh coming i was talking to brian balls the other day about that but um the what is your take on on staking and in the positives or possibly negatives and just sort of overall how do you think that could help or, or is a part of the industry right now i think it's just about all positive when it goes through a legitimate site like the ones that that you mentioned i, I just think it's so cool that fans from around the world could have a piece of daniel negrani's action during the world series of poker are you kidding me when yeah. could you have point you know zero one percent of rory mcelroy at the pga championship like that that kind of stuff would just never happen but but for you to feel involved to feel engaged to feel like you're on daniel's team which you are you do have a piece of the action i, I love it i i think uh i think it's great for poker because it's all about creating that opening you know that welcoming environment for people to jump into that game and and staking it is cool and and just it's just going to take one run to, to get somebody hooked right even if they don't have negroni's package if they bought a piece of a piece of you or a piece of me and we went deep at a world series of poker event what you know that's that's the most amazing kind of sweat that that yeah. you get and to, to have the financial incentive to go yeah. along with the emotional journey I, I think it's it's the perfect combination it, it's also it, it's so i think it's so good for poker and the, and the fact that it's like an influx of capital right you have people that are not playing able to play or you know that, that just even don't, don't really do hey like i like the idea of it i love watching it, but i don't you know i don't know how to i don't feel comfortable to do it or i don't want to buy in for a certain amount so like yeah to have a piece of 100k or a triton you know a million or whatever the the, the one dropper as you said it's just to like actually be in and like risk the amount you feel comfortable with and then get to sit back have some popcorn you have a tv your split screen watch a football game while your nba finals while you're sweating like and now the content you know the 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 the, the, the actually watching it streaming on the final table or getting to see the whole cards and living with it, it really is it seems like and you actually mentioned about golf because i know state kings has done something i think the corn fairy tour and there's the the arm wrestling yeah, and there's other things it's actually a fascinating concept if you really think about it like you said it couldn't happen in golf but i mean i don't know like if, if i were uh it, it, it seems like it could be kind of cool like if you were able there are a lot of other sports or things that you could sort of bridge it right where the, the fans can come in it's official it's good and then they can feel like you said i guess you can always just like you can kind of bet on them but it is a different different right. to have a piece right it's just kind of like it, it, it is it's it's cool i think that that is uh i think it's underutilized and i think it's something that can get just better and also crowdfunding and for the players too it, it gives them a chance to play bigger or take the pressure off a little right it's like hey if i'm gonna you know you look at the schedule there's rebuys you start talking about 5ks 10ks you know whatever you start looking yeah. at schedule, oh shit, you know it could be a couple hundred thousand in buy-ins and you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna sell not only because it's 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 fun but i can maybe play a little bigger or more than i would like and then you know that that there's it, it it really does sort of fit a lot of uh boxes and i think it makes the prize pools bigger and it's i know and i gotta give wsop a shout out from and gg with the software from the bahamas and what with the registration and maybe you yeah. know more and seen this even re more recently and and are aware but i think it this is going to be revolutionary where you 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 you, you register you, you you load up money on your phone or on your in your account and then you can literally like click an event you know you're walking down you you're running late you're rushing over you can literally like register and then you like get your seat draw and then you can show up at the table and get it like that that is wild like at the bahamas you know i was coming down it's a long walk from across the place and you're going there and then you're just literally like you know you don't have to go and do all that every time and wait in a line and worry about it. you literally can register go play that's crazy i think that's going to help so much and people too i think are turned off that even casual players they come like i gotta register i gotta sign up do this i gotta do all these things or if i get knocked out i gotta redo it again instead of just like oh rebuy and you sit down have you have you seen that have you been a part of that have you gotten to see some of that technology yeah and like it's 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 a game changer it's revolutionary like you said it, it's a drastic difference to the systems that have been in place in the u.s over the years i think poker atlas is doing a really really good job at trying to change everything as far as tournament registration is concerned as far as running a tournament is concerned trying to make it easier on both the operators and the players you know people complain of course about long lines at the world series of poker it's not like the world series of poker wants there to be long lines right they, they want to get people in just as much yeah. as the players want to be in there to play but when you have the convenience of this app like 
like World Series of Poker, WSOP Plus, I think they called it, uh, in the Bahamas that was put together by GG yep. and the World Series of Poker. In that app, you didn't have to wait in line. Even if the tables were full, you, you just click on your phone. You say, okay, I have 10K in my account. I want to play this 5K. Boom. I'm going to click it. It's the 5K. It says, no seats available. But hey, we're going to let you know. Estimated wait time, 45 minutes. And then 45 minutes, maybe you're hanging out by the pool. You get an alert on your app. It says, hey, your seat's available. Go to table 45, seat eight. Boom. That easy. That is a game changer for the World Series of Poker. I, I don't think it's going to be in place for this summer. You know, Nevada gaming, it's just hard to get some of these things through. They are making it easier via a payment service, Payfinity, I believe, that runs through Bravo. So it'll be a little bit easier. You can still deposit on your phone. You'll still be able to do a lot of mobile registration. I do think Bravo, or I know Bravo will still be the software behind running the poker tournaments. And listen, uh, hopefully hopefully Bravo gets better. I will just say it. And I think that they will have to get better to stay alive in what is now becoming a, a competitive marketplace. But it, Jeff, if we could have that app that you talked about in the Bahamas everywhere, I mean, that'd be huge for poker players, serious and casual ones. I, I Yeah, and I know they were optimistic about having it or some version of it. So I again, you're you're there. You probably, you know, you're in the loop on every like what's happening and around there. So I, I don't know today what's the the latest, but I, I was, I believe, because there was a crypto component which is crazy, and that was in the Bahamas, and right. which is very friendly crypto, and that was like unreal where you could do all that and, and do it. So I, that I know would not be, um, that's not ready or, or something that's okay. happening right now. But I thought that maybe you could still load it and be do similar type stuff. So maybe I don't know how where if the line falls, but I, it's definitely getting better. It is improving in that they're well aware. And also, you know, Michael Kim, what they're doing at GG, pretty pretty amazing stuff. But they they also kind of that moving of the venue, right? The Rio to this now Bally's, which Horseshoe is 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 in there. And that's kind of nostalgic as well, where back in the day and on Binion's, you know, on the on the street and the old Las Vegas, it's like that name and that brand. And that that also is like it's much facelift. To, for an experience than going to the real which real a lot of great memories and it was convenient in some ways with parking sure. and whatever, but it was just you know what i mean it just was kind of like what it, it needed a, a a pickup and and i think it's worked out well i think they've also really figured out now the venue because like that you know moving people from across or kind of the, the flow of it all it was still like getting to know the vent how to how to operate everything smoothly so i think it's even gonna be better where like i mean it was great but i just think it's even gonna be more streamlined more flow of like what makes sense and 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 I, I'm, I'm very excited to check it out again this summer and how many events you said you're going to be you will be you're doing broadcasting what does your wsop look like in terms of events you think you expect to play plus what will you where can people watch or follow during the wsop what you're doing well first of all let me just say that i i completely agree with you that i i think the location shift was was necessary because nowadays in 2024 the world series of poker belongs on the Las Vegas Strip, right? It's a yeah. premier event and it should be there. It should have that spot at the Horseshoe at Paris. They're getting better and better with the overall logistics with the organization. Now they're gonna have a, a separate area just for the daily deep stack tournaments and that'll help traffic as far as the actual tournaments are concerned with Horseshoe and with Paris. And as far as my specific schedule is concerned, listen, Jeff, you're, you're gonna see me there every day at the World Series. So whether it's going to be playing whether it's going to be play-by-play -play commentary, whether it's going to be sideline reporting, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be doing it all. So I'll fire that first 5K event. Hopefully I find a table. But if not, then I'll do the commentary with Brent Hanks for it. Um, I will do sideline reporting for the World Series of Poker main event. And this year, Jeff, I'm also going to play it. So I'm going to pull the double whammy for that tournament and both play and work during the World Series of Poker main event. So that's something... I'm really, really excited about because it is indeed, as we know, the greatest poker tournament in the world, no question about it. And so to be involved with that from both a work and, and playing standpoint is something that uh, that I really, really look forward to. So it's just a lot of play. It's a lot of work and uh, it's it's going to be awesome. I'm going to enjoy every minute of it. And and just for those that are not aware uh you you have i mean your your world i was i know you have some great tournament results and you've actually you got a lot of hen and mob caches and some some pretty nice scores including two very deep uh very deep main event runs i think you had like a 60 something 60th or 65th yeah. or in that range and then you also had another like 200 200 so you've had you've also taken down 
won a tournament first a few some wins in there which is nice we know it's hard to win even getting a big score is great okay. but getting that that trophy that title is uh what we what we all want to get and and tell me about sort of that deep run in the main event like what what is uh what was that like to get that that deep what year was it 2015 right 60th i mean that is deep yeah that that's deep whenever you're walking into uh day six of a poker tournament um you know that it's getting really intense the, the main event is is such a roller coaster ride and you know this i tell people this the uh, common analogy i use is what rick carlisle has used head coach of the indiana pacers formerly of the mavericks and he said in the playoffs you know when you win a game you're you're just on such a high like you think that championship is yours when you lose a game you're so extremely devastated you're crushed you're thinking the season is over the, yep. the actuality of it all it's probably somewhere in the middle right i think it's the same during the world series of poker main event and i'm curious to get your thoughts when you win a hand at the main you're like on top of the world you know yeah. you've got these hopes dreams desires it's all yeah. running through your mind you're like wow maybe, maybe this is my time to go deep to final table to win the main but when you lose a hand at the main it's just like it's just pure devastation pure disappointment you you build up to it for the entire year and you think that your day is done and the reality of it is it like if you win a hand sure that's nice if you lose a hand sure that's bad but it's like it it's not on those extreme ends of the spectrum so i experienced that a lot of course during yeah. a deep run at the world series of poker main event and then also uh i don't think i i'm here in my current broadcasting role today because back in 2014 and 2015 that's when i met Dan Gotti, who produces the World Series of Poker yeah. Main, and is now senior vice president over at Poker Hill. And I just don't think I have that uh, that door open to me to yep. pursue the the broadcasting ring. So th there's nothing like the main event. I've said it again and again, and I'll continue to say it. Yeah, it is, it is special, and it is funny how that that work butterfly effect. And yeah, I've heard great things. I actually don't know Dan well, but I've, I've heard amazing things. And Maury, someone I do know a little better and have a lot of respect for. Tell me about Maury and what it's like working with him and sort of what he actually does uh, for poker and, and what would poker go because i actually i got saw see him he's at the event that nutcase uh, we were playing yeah. streaming there last week i think you were in houston and joey ingram was doing the final the comment or it wasn't a final type was a it was a cash game stream ninja yeah. helmut yeah. aoki were there it was, it was a blast got to play in that saw maury lurking around he's kind of always involved in, in doing stuff what what is what is maury for poker to you in the, in the poker industry well he's always there L listen this will tell you everything you need to know about maury he is He's the president of Poker Go. Okay. And one of the first events that I'm working, this was in uh, 2018. And what's Maury doing? The crew needed to move a table. So he's out there at the table moving it with the rest of the crew. Like that's that's just the type of person he is. That's the type of atmosphere he creates. He's not too, too big time for anything, even though, I mean, he's a Poker Hall of Famer. He should just sit back, relax, and be able to enjoy the show but yeah. he's always involved he's always helping he's always running to get like starbucks or he's bringing in cookies from his wife kathy he's just so so genuine and i think that that's allowed poker go to create such a a family atmosphere with the crew and it's a crew now that wants to come to work because really they're working for maury and, and maury's leading the way as far as all of this is concerned maury knows poker is fun and wants everybody to have fun who's working on a show and wants everybody to have fun who's watching a show so i think he's just been so so good for poker i couldn't possibly put that into words um he's yep. a legend he's he's played a, a huge role in my career he's somebody who i've certainly looked up to and, and i think if you were to ask people at poker go about him a lot a lot of people would would say the same thing for sure for sure yeah i want to have maury on the pot I, he's got so many stories he's, he's seen to. it all he's been oh through the highs and lows and like literally pot, you know get one of those guys that you, you, you he, he should he should charge for uh for dinners or for for lunch for for, yeah. for anecdotes because i think he's just got probably stuff that's in the vault that's like crazy you know what i mean he knows the he knows the players personally he knows the in and outs and seeing i'm sure everything and more and i've heard some of those but uh it's great that you get to work with him and be there and see him and, and we'll definitely love to have more in the pod here and the the question i have about no game no future because we actually just i discovered that i'm a youtube tv subscriber and i yeah. and no game no future and I, we were just pulling it up here before and and seeing so actually on youtube tv you can go search it and it's it's all here the episodes as well as where else can people watch it so you can watch it on vice tv you can watch it on poker go if you have a poker go subscription and then jeff just like you said if 
you have a YouTube TV subscription, Poker Go channel will be part of that package. I think you can buy the channel separately now on YouTube. Yep. There are a lot of different outlets. And, and I'll tell you what, I haven't talked about this yet, but we just shot uh, season five in our studio last month. So it'll come out over the next couple of months. This is the best season that we've shot by far. There's an insane amount of drama. There's an insane amount of entertainment. There's a Phil Hellmuth blow up, Jeff, and you've seen some Hellmuth blow ups. This one might be the top Phil. I, I got a teaser on that. Think I about think that either, first. Either that is that's a big statement. I and he 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 alluded to it. Either it was like on it was either on the nutcase launch stream where okay. he said what happened or i think he just said you need to stay tuned he might have mentioned it off the camera so i won't say anything but i heard it's it's definitely like yeah if, if you if you start talking about the podium moments of helmuth tantrum and, and blow-ups like that's that's definitely worth the subscription itself because he is he can really go off on a on a on a tangent um and and, and get, get fired up so we'll be checking that out and what what is it though like what for those who haven't seen no gamble no future yeah. what is actually what is this 45 minute show what what is it? What are you doing on the show specifically? It used to be a podcast as well that you did, or right? Was, we we started with it as a podcast, and it's just completely morphed into a cash game show and a high stakes cash game show. At that, I, I'd like to think that the difference between this and a a high stakes poker, for example, is that this show is a lot less serious, and, and we just have a lot more fun. Brent does a great job with putting together the lineups, and they are just made for TV. They're made for entertainment. So you're going to have guys joking around with each other. The action is going to be just mind boggling. Like these guys just want to put some chips in the middle. There's very little folding. We also have this element that we're bringing back called Cash of the Titans, which is this hybrid tournament and cash game format where the person who wins the most money, not only, of course, profits in a cash game, but they win a big piece of this prize pot with the players putting up an additional hundred thousand dollars each. And so there's 500 K up for grabs. If you want the most money over three wow. days. So we have a lot of different things going on with that, no gamble, no future. That, that's, so we play high six cash and then we do a hybrid. That's awesome. And that that's, you know, I think that that's sort of like a, a variation of seven deuce or the stand up game or incentivizing action yeah. or to go for it. Like that's kind of a, uh, that's a, and it's just, again, it's another thing you have to kind of calibrate, figure out people are probably playing a little looser more, you know what I mean? It just makes it more fun. So that's, that's awesome. Anytime you can, you can yeah, sort and of along those, yeah. along those lines, Jeff, I think it's a great point because of course we do have the seven deuce game and we do have the stand up game, but we also have what we call the wheel of pain. So for example, if you fold to a four bet, you know, this is no gamble, no future. We don't like that. If yeah. you run it twice, this is no gamble, no future. We don't, you have to go spin the wheel of pain. So Remco Rinkema is there and maybe you have to take a shot of hot sauce. Maybe it's mayo. Maybe you'll have to, you know, do your do a Phil Helmuth impersonation. It's Chug something like case. that. We just oh, something. Yeah, something yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly. exactly. So uh, we just that have opens a lot up of the wheel of sponsors too. That there's definitely, you know, you like the that's the, the, true. The, that's a good. That's a you know, listen. That's a good idea. I think that's that makes sense, man. That's a that's a that's a beautiful thing. Uh, I I do. I've I have. I have other questions. I do feel I put you on my want to have multiple. I, I, I'm saving you for also a I want to have a when you win a bracelet, when we win our joint bracelet, yeah. we're going to do that. We can do both a podcast us, stream. That'll yeah. be the 25K bonus to the viewers. It's a book. I, I, it's there. If we both win a bracelet in the year of 2024, it's a lot of opportunity. There's online, there's live. That's yeah. it. That's the thing. We'll, we'll run it back. We're definitely going to be having some more time together and again always a, always a pleasure i think i gotta ask the closing are you you're in vegas are you are you single in a relationship can you say what, what's going on for the, the viewers out uh, there i'm fortunate enough to be in a relationship with an amazing woman her name is tatiana we met uh via a dating app when she was planning a potential move to vegas so fortunately i got to see her one drink with her and Again, lucky, fortunate. I use all these words in my career and also in my relationship because I'm dating her. We've been dating um, seriously now for for about a year. She's awesome. She's in Vegas. She's very supportive of the whole poker lifestyle, whether it's it's working uh, or playing. So hopefully, Jeff, I just don't mess this one up. All right. Well, don't don't blow it. Running good. It, it, it counts off the table on the table and, and definitely rooting for you there. And where can people follow you on all the socials? What is it? What is it? What are you the most active on? 
So I'm the most active on Twitter or on X, I guess. There you go. You have it up, uh, Jeff Platt. I'm, I'm trying to get better, Jeff, at Instagram. You know, you're great. You're on all the social media platforms and you crush it. But really, Twitter, Jeff Platt, Instagram, Jeff Platt one. Maybe I'll get involved with another platform one of these days. But that's pretty much it. It is a lot. You know, if you don't, if you got to have like some help or scheduling stuff, because it, it yeah, becomes yeah. like it becomes almost like uh not it becomes like because if you start doing stuff that's fun and you want to share or like be a part of but then it's also like you're sort of like man it take, takes time to like do it and the wording and the thing and like looking at it, it's just it becomes like a uh i and i again it's having kids now too i feel like less i kind of feel like posting less it's it's a weird it's a weird dynamic but in the world as a broadcaster as a player and, and people that are swaying along it is, is nice to provide updates so that's good where people can follow along with you and check in on what you got going and and, and again they can check no gamble no future as well as other areas that they can watch you and and do things with twitch you said you're not streaming regularly but that also you could follow on twitch with you that that's another another option and you will potentially stream time time is that something during the wsop a deep run is that possible or because of your day-to-day no, -day, I, I think if we go deep online um that we could make a twitch yeah. stream and we, we we could bring it back for all time's sake i think Okay. I love it. Well, listen, uh, yeah, may, maybe, uh, that would be, that would be fun. I'm hoping to do some streams this summer too. I thought about that, whether, you know, in Vegas or if, uh, M Michigan, man, I'm going to keep that on my radar. Michigan. That sounds cool. And, you know, hopefully after the series, I guess in I, 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 late July or August, that's like, that's usually what happens for like the bracelets. I believe that the stretch of them, but again, I'm, you would know better. I'm a little out of that, but I, 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 would go to I, would, I would go spend some time in Michigan and stream some brace events. That would be fun to me. I would love to do that and go home and, and, and package that together. So I'm going to take in. Do you, do you know if that's released by any chance? Is that even out or it's just generally it's, that time? It's not released yet. And it, uh, I think it's coming any day now oh, for, for the summer. And I think they'll just be during the, the World Series and then that separate kind of fall schedule like we talked about. And and I and I, I have I literally do, I have more. I do have more. I, I we're gonna do a follow up. We're gonna do like a, 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 a episode two. I think that would be awesome to do and like recap when we have a we have a big score or you, you know, when you have a big score and it'll be fun. And 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 actually, Poker Go though. With my last question is Kerry Katz. He's a guy that doesn't feel like does as many interviews. He's kind of quiet. El Jefe. Yeah. He kind of has built himself a playground. He's what like top five or seven in all time money list. Just literally like a machine. He's sort of like I don't even know how he's. I, I can't even say he's under the radar, but he sort of is in a way. Although he just wins everything and in final tables, all this stuff and built his thing. What is Kerry Katz for Poker Go and, and Poker You? That's my last question for the deck. Well, listen. I mean, it's as simple as this. Without Kerry, we just don't have Poker Go. Period. Here's somebody who is just so passionate about the game who has invested so much not not just financially but he's invested so much of his time as well so he's proven that he has this unbelievable commitment to poker and he wants to see poker grow and he utilizes poker go to to try to make that happen and so uh we love it i, I mean we love having him as the boss el jefe and he and he loves 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 poker i mean you see him playing it like every single poker tournament here's a guy who probably doesn't need to you know the min cash for 21k but he's worried about those pgt points and he's always on it and he's just so uh competitive and he enjoys poker so much and that's really good for us to have at the helm of, of poker go for sure uh well said and good luck in the fantasy draft as well that sounds Thank like you. that's a that's a big sweat going to be exciting and and a lot there's a lot going on in poker going to be staying tuned and we will be in touch and and i'll see you in las vegas and uh, again appreciate the time and please everyone give jeff a follow and check him out during the wsop and brent we're gonna have brent on soon looking forward to that hope to have maury hope to have carry but I'll, i love what you guys are doing i love poker go and people can subscribe poker go they can also get that uh the the, the app i mean what what is their code i know that there's different times or discounts is there anything what, what 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 can people do on poker go to get it yeah it's just it's simple it's pokergo.com you click subscribe you can give them the promo code i think plat 2024 probably might got might have gotten that one wrong i don't know i'll tweet about it um but i think that's a good promo code for you to use to get a discount you also you can get a discount as we approach the the world series of poker so we got it all going on and and let me say thank you for having me you know a big fan of yours you know that and, and the, of what you do and I, speaking of great for poker jeff gross right there uh absolutely fantastic for poker so it's great to chat with you and i look forward to the summer celebration podcast after we both have acquired a bracelet yes thank you thank you for the kind words again love it i love poker you know i wish i'd even be more active or there just 
two young kids and and trying to do do it all with within I, I i i would i would i've i've suggested moving to las vegas but my wife or we'll see we'll see at some point right now okay. not gonna happen but I, I do love the I, I love what vegas is doing it's crazy how many tournaments and venues and, and the, the poker all this yeah. stuff it's like all in one playground so it is it is very cool and uh yeah i i, I look forward to being there for the wsop always love being out there and, and catching up with everyone so say hi to everyone at the studios there i will have brent on soon i'm sure he'll say kind words and he'll rub in the bracelet maybe one more time we'll have him on soon sure. and we will see see you guys uh out in vegas so thanks again this is episode number 202 the flow show jeff platt thanks again and i'll see you in vegas thank you jeff appreciate the time as always cheers